Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and it's my favorite creatures from Half Century. Welcome to a garden space program mission. Uh, this one is water feeder. I hope this goes better than the stuff I did last year. Um, there is a blog post on on Kevek dot eighty. Uh, explaining the, the mission goals but basically it's a solar powered mission um, and we want to de detect uh, water in the form of rain and possible possibly uh, soil humidity and changes in soil humidity when it's raining um, it's basically an Arduino in a box uh, with, with the solar charge controller and this is just my on off switch uh, because everything is sealed with hot glue on top and uh, I have one uh, relay inside that um, is spy stable so it can whatever state you put it in it stays there and Three wires go outside to turn it on off, but I can't charge it from outside. Nothing like that. This is the Arduino Nano. Um, the radio modem, internal temperature and humidity sensor. Um, this is the this is the voltage divider for the uh, battery voltage. And there is another voltage divider for the soil humidity sensor, so I can, or not, it's not the voltage divider, it's a, a number of uh, pull down resistors which I can select from the Arduino. Uh, external um, temperature humidity sensor, uh, by the way. This is a box where Christmas lights came in, so uh, everything is as cheap as possible. There is also, um, I had, last year I had a problem uh, that uh, I got water in my stuff and it didn't drain out, because you can't seal it a hundred percent, it's just not working with the materials. I'm, I'm using because it has to be as cheap as possible. So there's a hole in there and a 3D printed sieve so uh, water can go out but insects can't come in I hope maybe. Uh, we'll see. Um, this is the battery. It's a classic uh, 6 volt lead acid battery. In theory, it's maintenance free, but yeah, uh, whatever. It's it's a small motorcycle battery. Uh, that's my um, basically uh, my start stop mechanism. If I want to start the probe, I just wire up from the outside to this uh, relay, which is inside the three wires that that go out the black and two yellow and just switch the relay uh, this is the antenna in, in, in the back uh, and this is a 3d printed cup and the water level sensor so if it rains water comes in rises and I should be able to detect it and it's 3d printed and not completely watertight and also black so or not completely black but relatively dark so if the sun comes out this should dry out and we should be able to detect another rain if this thing doesn't corrode basically if we detect rain one time we already have a mission success for this sensor uh, since the box is so small I also added two pieces of old wood with some nails pointing down so it basically sticks on the ground I um, disassembled uh, or cut up 
I have to say, uh, a can of energy drink and made some uh, rain cover uh, for uh, for the external temperature and humidity sensor. So if it rains, it <laughs> uh, humid air comes in, but water shouldn't come in, maybe. Um, this is another look uh, when, when the thing is mounted uh, at the wat water drain. Um, everything in the box, maybe we can show it is there is nothing mounted on the bottom of of the thing uh it's all mounted or hot glued on the side so even if there is a bit of water it shouldn't touch the electronics they might corrode over time but yeah what the heck it should work for a month <clears throat> to uh, cheap Chinese uh, solar cells uh, mounted on on um, on an old piece of of plexiglass there's the water cup the antenna um, this is another look at the, the external temperature humidity sensor yeah everything is hot glued and uh, and the contacts made possibly waterproof or at least water resistant with hot glue yeah me pointing at the rope for some reason um and it's called the fritz weber memorial station unofficially because yeah um that was a good friend and neighbor who died last year. And these are the, the two soil probes. So, um, uh, water feeler is already outside, but it's switched off. So, uh, let me get outside and turn it on. And this is a... Uh, you see the the link here. It's also linked in the description of YouTube. If uh, if everything worked, um, and this is a live view. You don't have to reload it. Uh, it as soon as data comes in, it should show up here. This is the debug view of my. Uh, of my radio network um, AC and AD are my two um, uh, relay systems on uh, um, in my attic uh, this AC uh, is um, deep garden network one which we won't be using today if everything works we all or we relay all stuff through uh deep garden network 2 which you can also see so a basic status uh, it sends a status frame every minute or 30 seconds. I have to look into what I set up, but I think it's 30 seconds. It just basically says it's here. So I'll go outside and turn it on. And then we have to send commands to, to send the status. Just one moment.
Okay. In theory. I have my headphones on even if I don't need to, but I'm so used to having my headphones on when I when I'm streaming I just I can't stream without them for some reason. Okay. Um let's see we are relaying in theory through through Deep Garden Network 2. Let's just check. Yes. Uh, uplink and downlink via the relay. So let's try to read. Uh, um, byte 9 uh, of the configuration. The probe configuration that should be right enable status frame that should be zero but we should get a confirmation uh, read yay we got did we non direct why Damn it. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Hmm. Okay. commanded in the blind and we could also command it to why no doesn't okay Let's try to command it directly. Okay. It might be a problem with the relay station. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, we get status down, it does relay our commands down. Let's see, we, yeah, we relay. For D DGN2, that's that, to mission control. Okay, um, hmm. 
Interesting, why does the uplink not work? Okay, uh, let me see. Okay. It comes sixteen one. That's the relay delay of of DGN two. Okay. Sixteen fifty. Okay. it back to Origin delay by twenty four and two bytes. That should be what? Let's see. That should should be two. Two fifty six plus two fifty four or something like that. Let's or two forty four. Uh, yeah, five hundred. Um, it should be plenty. Um, for this to okay. Let's do the uplink directly for now. Um. But downlink does relay, so there there might be a bug in my radio system or my ground system. I had some problems with local data transfer, but we'll see. Oh, but that's correct. That's correct. I need to make a global configuration, but I do didn't have time. And I also wanted to wait to see what my actual op operational needs are. So, okay, now, we want to read or we want to get regular updates from the 
the DHT sensor, the digital temperature and humidity. Um, enable DHT frame. Is off, so we set it on and we get a temperature reading. So it's uh, those, those sensors, even if they are next to each other, they're always a bit different, but um. They're very cheap, non-calibrated sensors, but um, but we, we should get a trend, and it it's also saving everything in into database, so we can uh, look up the, the exact values later. But um, yeah, the temperature is pretty much the temperature is pretty much the same, plus minus a degree or so and because I closed it out uh, inside with like 40-50% humidity and then put it outside where it's colder the internal humidity is a lot higher than the external so that's a good validation that the sensor in theory works so that's one thing we can put off our checklist. We next thing we want to commission is the water feeler frame. That's the frame with the uh, um, soil resistance and rain sensor. It's not raining at the moment, but we should get a baseline. So. Uh, yeah, that's off. So one thing I actually wanted to do is We want to set it on. We sent the command. We received it and then we should get data maybe. It could take a minute. But ah, I should send the correct command. Yeah, there it is. So there is no water in the cup, so the water level is zero. That's good. I should fix the rounding issue, by the way. Um, but that's only a display thing in in the web view. So. Um, we seem to be in range, okay. Mm -hmm. We get some measurements, we, we can only see over time how that behaves. What we could do, 
I have pre-stored uh, basically some some pseudo measurements just to verify that the downlink works um, of the the soil capacity series. So we want to send command twenty one. Did that work? I might I might not have Okay, and then we uh, uh, it doesn't send a status back. That's that's a design error, but yeah. <coughs> we we could send command fourteen to download the pre-stored series. Um. Command fourteen Yeah, I can only transfer a roughly 32 bytes a second uh, so this is very slow but we could actually just start a measurement send command um, command 13 and it needs some parameters which I have to look up. Um, uh, actually, I have I have a, a script that does it for me. Um, we want, let's say, the 1K resistor with a 10 millisecond delay and name the series, um, Commissioning ten K. Soil capacity measurement finished, and now we can. What was it? command 14 to download the series um Range. Something happened. Um, <clears throat> something happened during measurement, and we don't know what. Um, Why? Hmm. 
or ah it it didn't trans uh it didn't receive one of the frames that's why the the thing the thing has a spike in it so oh. hmm That was gonna send 10k and let's say no delay. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, the first 10 or 11 measurements are without a resistor, a pull down resistor, and then it pulls down. So we have a baseline, and then it changes uh, basically up to here. We have the baseline, and then it turns on the selected pull down resistor, and we get a nice curve. And that should shows us that there is a certain uh, capacitance within the soil because it acts as a capacitor and that might also change depending how wet the soil is but we have to see over days and months Hundred K that basically does nothing. Let's say four seventy ohm. That might be too fast to be measured by my system, but we'll see. Floating in this case is without a pull down resistor in place, which should give a constant line. We sh shouldn't see a 50 hertz thing like if it's not connected. If there is no connection, then we might see a 50 hertz sine wave. Right. Huh. Battery voltage also is stable, that's good. More or less. Free memory is hopefully stable. Um, yeah, right. Um, we could.
just as a quickie try to download pre-stored images the thing doesn't have a camera but to test uh future image transfers i included uh, since i had free space in flash memory i included four test images um one rendered from minecraft with, uh, in, in three parts which is red green and blue and uh, basically a very very low res uh, version of the pioneer plague um, from the pioneer space probes so um, Uh, we want command 27 and download the green bitmap it's it's gonna look everything look is gonna look grayscale uh it, I'd have to combine it in a in a script or graphic program to um, to make a color image that's how I'm gonna transfer the, the thing one bit plane at a time. But in theory, we should get we should get an image transfer. Sixteen pixels at a time. Yeah, and, and sometimes um, sometimes uh, some blocks aren't transferred, so we would have to request them again. Uh, we can request single blocks. We, we have this command uh, download block but I haven't had time to write the script to automate it that's one of the things I'm gonna do in the next week or something like that And yeah, uh, it, it's um, this is the green bit plane from the image. Um, and there's also a red and blue. And if we combine this, which we could try, I think. And it's a... Uh, what is it? A 68 by 68 pixel image that takes like two minutes to download. Let's see. Print screen this into or save it as um, source garden space program mid water field the down from probe and we call it green uh, 
and then we download the red which is the same process And that's the same thing why uh, oftentimes um, when you get images from space uh, you, you get um, uh, like a, f a false color image which like um, it, it looks natural but uh, the, the, the title under the image says uh, it, it's like uh like green blue and infrared or something because um even if they could carry the uh, all the filters needed um and that's always a big if because it's it's um it's it, it's just weight um they have um they download uh they don't they don't make a, a jpeg and then compress it and blah 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 uh for scientific images and the purpose mostly is scientific of of, of space missions um they send them uh, unmodified that the full bit planes and then sometimes they only send two of the bit planes because they only need like red and blue and they don't need green so they calculate the green or uh, like uh, was on New Horizons so that they have a fast um, previews for the press they downloaded a somewhat high res image of, of the in, in, in black and white and then they downloaded a much much lower resolution uh, color image and then just used the grayscale information to, to to show the picture and then colorize the blocks with the, the lower lower resolution color information that's just speed of transfer so we need to do the same here. Uh, save. That's the red. And remember this. This is 68 by 68 pixels. Uh, at this speed, and this speed is a bit faster than the fastest possible uh, thing New Horizons can send, a single uh, image uh, with a full color in like... Um, uh, a megapixel which isn't that great actually um, with, with only a megapixel uh, could take uh, 27 hours I think it is yeah actually I'm, I'm quite a lot faster than New Horizons in some regards because they 
I think they mostly limited to uh, a byte a second, and I've got thirty two bytes a second. So hmm. if you if you want a megapixel image um, in full color, then yeah, you're gonna wait a lot. That's why the few that them basically the. Of the photos they had from Mars, it took two years to download. Two, two, yeah, two years. And that's why they uh, basically sent down um, thumbnails of everything and then selected what they actually wanted to download otherwise it would have taken like five years and they not only selected which image to downlink but which part of which image so if you have Mars in the middle uh, uh, Pluto in the middle sorry and big black space around it then you don't need to send the black space because you know it's black you can just regenerate that uh, in the computer in mission control yeah you get some transmissions e transmission errors but let's save that as blue Then we need to uh, game. And the reason why I don't want JPEG compression is exactly because you got the problems with image transmission. If you have got JPEG then or some other compressed format, if you got a byte error, the rest of the image is unusable. If you transfer it block by block, then uh, then basically uh, you only lost that part of the image, which even proper software can pretty much uh, reconstruct or at least fill in properly so it doesn't look like there was a problem we might need to Blank that out. Because I'm working with sc screenshots here. It's a bit iffy. Um we want to fill that with white so then we should be able to auto crop it no Let's crop it manually.
image crop to selection okay and save it again okay so we got this one image crop to selection that's the green one and the blue one we have to do the same Now I have to Google for a moment. Um, Grayscale Grayscale, okay, then we na make a new override Okay, and then we say color components compose. Okay, Uh, wait, something, okay, red, green, pink, somehow my Red should be should be grayscale. Okay. Oh, 
base layers red, green, and blue. Okay, image. Uh, Okay, this layer can go to hell, okay, somehow, components, compose, red, green, and blue, okay, yay, we got a color image! That worked, actually. That worked. We just transferred a color image via RF24. Um, hello. It, ha it has some transfer problems. But, and, and the colors are a bit off because, uh, yeah, I... Uh, that's, that's how the image was uploaded to, to Flash. But yeah, um, we see a house, we see a beach, we see the sky and we see water. So, uh, yeah, that worked. And we could also No. Um transfer uh a last test image which is a grayscale image. which is a very, very low resolution image of part of the Pioneer plaque. A plaque, um, you know, um, you know, that one because I found it appropriate to use one of those. Uh, if aliens ever find the thing, then there is this stuff in there. But yay, we downloaded a color image, woo! That worked, that worked quite nicely. And as you, you can see that the incoming packets Is actually the delay is of um, uh, one of those 
many programs in between doesn't seem to work quite fluently but yay we can download images yay and see that is that okay that but yeah um it works let's go back to the mission objectives communicate with mission control yes there might be a problem with relaying messages up but i'll have to look into that um downlink yes we can't do that we, uh, until it rains we can't pre press it okay there's a i need to fix the typo measure soil resistance yes we did that proof solar charging uh, it's midnight pretty much six minutes after midnight so we can't prove that solar charging works um and we have to wait a week to to complete the required objectives we can't do that after rain soil capacity we measured that we, i have to look into the data but prove the ability to act as a radio relay for future missions you know at least for downlink relay and for uplink we could actually test that let's go to uh, deep garden network one which isn't currently in use for downlink so let's say frame one next link um one is water feeler and next link to is dgn1 so if we send a readconf command then it doesn't work okay um okay we can read directly so if we say relay through water feeler the downlink then it doesn't relay okay um hmm. that might also be a problem locally it, that isn't to say that the probe doesn't work because that might just be a timing issue
it, it's now configured to downlink for, yeah or it might be a connection issue I'll have to look into that but that's not for today I think So let's turn it back. Might be a problem locally with my setup, so hmm. Function for more than a month, actually. Yeah, we, we'd, we'd have to downlink store test images. Yes, we did that. We tested part of that. We restored it from RAM. We, we didn't write yet. Um, surface radio relay. Yeah, that looks iffy at the moment. Function for more than a year. Mm. Yeah, um, basically, I think the code works, but there are some, some stuff I have to tune. Uh, it's probably just a timing problem because it, everything is very slow and I fear that all incoming and outgoing packets on the same channel, there might be a problem when it happened too close together. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, we, we are currently downlinking via our um, DGN2 relay uh, in, in the attic. That's the... Let's see. That's uh, DGN1. Uh, the Deep Garden Network uh, Relay 1. That's also in the attic. There's an old un unused room up there in my house. And DGN2 uh, is in the best possible position it's it's uh that's the relay station and that's the antenna so yeah there's not much better uh coverage you can get in my house but yay it seemed to work Battery voltage is down to 6.19. The battery might or might not have been full, uh, but we'll, we'll see if 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 the uh, the charge controller cuts it out or not. I don't know how much power the charge controller uh, uses by itself, but yeah, in theory, it should last the night. Let's just see. Um, okay. 
speed. Okay. Let's see if we look here. Um that's the voltage, that's the time. Maybe I should just um lock time. Okay, yeah, uh, and basically uh, the way it works out roughly 0 0.02 volts are one mark at the, the analog read, so it's not perfect, but it's close enough uh, for our purposes, so um, we started by with 6.23 volts an hour ago and dropped 0 0.03 volts. So at uh, 0 0.4 4 volts, okay. Let's say Yeah. Um if you only have eight hours sun and the battery is fully charged at the end, we drop uh a bit more than half a volt. So um there should be It should be within the, the capability of the battery. It might cut out this night and every time it's not very sunny uh, for, for a day or two. I'm not sure, but I think uh, it should be enough battery power to, to work 24 hours a day on most days. So, we'll have to see. Let's see. It's um, Yeah, in theory, I'm not sure how, wh when it's gonna cut out, but if, if it cuts out at exactly 6 volts, then it's gonna last another 5 hours. Uh, if it cuts out a bit lower than that, then we should be fine.
idea. Um, uh, no, I closed. window I still need it um, but yeah yeah it works so far And I think I'm gonna conclude the live stream here because it's already after midnight and I have to go to work in the morning. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!